Hello, I'm Gian Piero Palermo from Wild Cornell Medicine in New York. With this video, we'll introduce a special issue of reproduction celebrating the 25th anniversary of ICSI. Infertility affects approximately 15% of couples of reproductive age, and among other causes, the reason for the infertility can be equally attributed to both partners. The introduction of in vitro fertilization in the late 70s was devised to treat various forms of infertility related mainly to the female partner. However, soon after his inception, it was evident that there were limitations as proven by the inability of about 40% of the couple to achieve fertilization. Therefore, the 1980s saw the surfacing of several procedures attempting to enhance the intermingling of the spermatozoa with the oocyte, such as partial zonal dissection, zonal drilling, and subzonal injection. It is indeed an art technique that led to the development of intracytoplasmic sperm injection as we know it today. Intracytoplasmic sperm injection was first attempted in human in 1988. However, no pregnancy were reported until 1992, marking our current year as the 25th anniversary. X is now credited for over 3 million baby born. In this issue, comprising of an editorial and five chapters, we provide an overview of the development of ICSI in the chapter titled The Pioneering of Intracytoplasmic Sperm Injection, Historical Perspective, by Zev Rosenberg. We will then describe the preliminary work performed in animals, in domestic and wild mammals, by Daniel Salomone. X involved the injection of a single spermatozoa into an oocyte, <coughs> excuse me, thus restoring the equivalency of the two gametes to one to one. ICSI minimized the spermatozoa immaturity or dysfunction, which may lead to the inability of this cell to penetrate and fertilize the egg. <clears throat> Although the primary indication for ICSI is severe male factor infertility, several other indications are now popular, albeit controversial. We will discuss indication for ICSI and the development of a variety of ancillary assay adjuvant to a standard semen analysis, useful to characterize competence and aid in the selection of the optimal spermatozoa. In the chapter, ICSI, State of the Art in Human, by my own team. Although ICSI has had much success over the years, it has not gone without qualm regarding the well-being of the offspring generated by this unnatural insemination method that often command the utilization of a morphologically suboptimal spermatozoa. In the chapter Long-Term Outcome by Nigel Pereira, the physical cognitive development of ICSI offspring, ranging from two years to the oldest cohort of 18, 22 years, will be discussed in detail, providing the most recent information that thus far appears reassuring. ICSI has pushed the boundaries of fertility potential by empowering the individual spermatozoa in assisting countless men that would not have been able to conceive naturally. However, there are still limitations which concern patients with spermatogenic arrest or germ cell ablation. Fortunately, recent achievement in regenerative medicine by the utilization of embryonic stem cell, and more recently, induced pluripotent stem cell, are focused on facilitating neogametogenesis. These advances may allow for eventual gamete production, or the information gained from this study may even guide to restoring in vivo function of the germinal epithelium. This field with this recent exciting accomplishment will be elucidated in the final chapter, stem cell, in vitro chemitogenesis and male infertility by Ayashi and team. The development of in vitro fertilization marks an important step in reproductive medicine, allowing childless couples to fulfill their dream. ICSI, a father assistant couple afflicted by various array of male reproductive dysfunction and unable to achieve a pregnancy by standard in vitro insemination. The recognition given to a single spermatozoa via the procedure has opened the door to the utilization of immature form of the male gamete, and together with upcoming new technique in the field, will allow us to treat men with complete spermatogenic failure in the near future. I wish you happy reading and goodbye.